What's going on guys? Just loves you. My name is Cody and this is the Christian News Show. We do every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and I realize it's late but the show is up. I said we'd have a show on Friday and we're having a show on Friday. And our first story of the day is about abortionist Kermit Gosnell and yes, we are talking about an abortionist like 20 seconds into this video. And chances are you've probably heard of this guy already especially if you're like pro-life or pro-choice or just like really into the politics that go along with abortions. And the reason that you've probably heard about this guy is because he is not just like an abortionist, he is a murderer. And I don't just say that, like, pro-life, pro-choice, whatever you are, you will find this guy to be a murderer. Like, he had an assembly line going on for these abortions, and, like, the baby was still breathing after it was aborted. Then they would just, like, kill the baby and leave it laying on the table. When all this came out, like, the headlines in the media were calling it the house of horrors for his abortion clinic. And the reason he is in Christian news today is because he was talking to a reporter about his Christian faith. And as I was reading the headlines, I was really excited about this because I was like, Gosnell is spiritually innocent. That must mean that he, like, realized what he was doing was wrong and repented and he found Jesus. And now, like, you know, the whole thing. He's been saved. It's awesome. No. Because according to Gosnell, he wasn't in the wrong by murdering little babies and violently murdering little babies. According to him, and this could be a huge whole other debate, he says that it would have been more sinful of him to let those babies live in a poverty-stricken world where they wouldn't have been taken care of than to have aborted them. So obviously he has no idea what adoption agencies are or anything. And like I'm not even going to get into the arguments of pro-life and pro-choice and all of that. It's the way that he did it, like how violent and inhumane it was. And I can say inhumane because even to our prisoners who were like, get the death sentence, we inject them with lethal poison that doesn't hurt them and they die peacefully. They don't get thrown onto a counter and left to die. I mean, I told you guys this before, but here's my thing. I don't really vote on pro-life or pro-choice abortion stuff because I would love to be pro-life, but I also think it'd be smart to be pro-choice because things like this would happen all the time if there were no regulations and it was just made illegal these abortions would happen and they would happen in this disgusting way. Like if abortions are going to happen, I would rather them be in a regulated hospital where everything is up to code and all of that instead of being like underground and illegal and people are doing it like at the backs of their houses. And it just goes to show that like not everything is black and white in this world. And obviously I wanna fuel every fire I possibly can today because the next story is about gay marriage. Yay. I get a lot of flack from other Christians because I am for gay marriage politically. I believe in the United States, it is a free country. It is not hurting me in any way for someone to marry whoever they want to marry. But an argument that I get from Christians every once in a while is that if gay marriage was made legal, then churches that said, no, we still don't want to marry gay people would be discriminative against those people. Which I do get because people saying that like the church won't marry a gay couple could be seen as like hateful, which I understand because half those churches that say no to gay people for getting married probably are hateful. It's just that for Christians, what a marriage is is a huge symbol of th things within the Bible. Our marriages are incredibly symbolic to what our faith is, and so a gay marriage breaks what that idea is. That being said, what a Christian calls a marriage and what the government calls a marriage is two totally different things. And by their definitions, homosexuals should definitely have governmental rights to be married. And I also believe that the church should have the right to not marry those people if they don't want to. And the reason that I say all that is because there is a bill going through the House of Representatives to make sure that the church is protected from not getting in trouble for not marrying gay people. See, churches are considered non-profit and so they don't have to pay taxes like normal companies. And so it's very possible that if the government was like, gay marriage is now legal and churches were like, we don't care, we still don't want to marry those gay people, the government could say, well, then you are not protected anymore from us. And thus you have to pay taxes just like everybody else. And this new bill was brought up to make sure that that never happens to the church. And even though I am for gay marriage within the government, I think this is great because I think the church should be protected and not have to worry about like being a hate group for not marrying gay people. All that being said, I brought this up the last time I talked about homosexuality, but if you're gay and you're watching this, I love you and I don't define you by your sex life. You are way more than your sex life. In fact, I will probably judge you more on whether or not you're a Doctor Who fan, in which you should be. And that brings us to the final story of the day, which is about persecution just around the world, because it seems that it is increasing everywhere. After the last couple of weeks, people are saying that Egypt has had the most persecution of Christians it's had for centuries. Syria is still looking bad, North Korea, and it's just kind of everywhere right now. And it's not like Egypt where it's like the most it's been in forever, but it is just increasing 
over time. So while the world tries to exterminate Christianity, I just wanted to say prayers out to all the people around the world who are suffering because people just don't want Christianity around. Whether it's because they're Muslim or they're just scared of Christianity because of the things that Christianity can start. It's a sad truth, but it's just a matter of fact that like when people become Christians, you start to get extremists. And like in China, people are scared that if like people become Christian, there will be a war because you'll have extremists fighting for their God and completely missing the idea of Christianity. But there are all of those other people who are like actually saved and they're not missing the point and it's making their life so much better. So just prayers out to them that they stay safe. My name is Cody Garber, bringing news to the Christian community every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. In closing, let the haters hate, let the Christians pray to everybody like, subscribe. I'll see you later and God bless.